Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We like to again welcome everybody by way of internet. We pray that you're blessed and healthy. Amen. Glory be to God. We also want to give a shout out to our missionaries in Pakistan. They do a great work with children over there. So we were blessed by that. And if you would like to be a blessing to our ministry, amen, and all the outreaches, including our missionaries, praise the Lord. You can do that by going on PayPal or our address. And uh, we would surely appreciate it and use it for the glory of God. And now would be a good time for you to hit that share button because we all have people we love. And we want to want them to hear the word of God, the power of God, that they might be saved. Amen. Amen. And uh, friends and family members. And uh, we, we really appreciate you doing that because we're, we see a lot of views, a lot of comments on uh, the Internet. And we're grateful for that. We give God all the glory. Can we give Amen. God some glory in the house? Amen. 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 I titled this message, The Power of Influence. Hmm. Do you realize that we're all influenced by something or somebody? Amen. We're going to get into that today. I'm going to use that word a lot because I want it to stay in your mind. Amen. Way after this sermon is done, I want you to think a lot of time before you say or do anything, what or who is influencing you? And what effect does it have on your life, not just now, but for all eternity? Amen. Because everyone is influenced by, again, someone as we've been growing up, you know, and uh, either by our parents, either by teachers in school or universities or coaches on sport teams and heroes. We call heroes in sports and friends and Hollywood. I mean, Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. <laughs> There's always some kind of influence. Mm -hmm. All right. TV. Remember the soap opera? They, it was <laughs> it was called Make My World Turn. And then they should title it, Make My Stomach Turn. Remember that one? All right, all right. Praise God. I can see you ain't awake yet today. All right. That one way over your head. All right. So what does the word influence really mean? It has a lot of meanings. I'm just going to run through a couple of them, such as brainwashing someone. People get brainwashed by the wrong influence to get someone to change their mind and agree with you. Also, it means to control others or to talk someone into something that they really don't want to do. Influence. Also, it means to seduce mm, or to con. In other words, to be led by their nose like a sheep led to the slaughter. People are influenced by a lot of the wrong things these days. People are influenced by something or someone. Some are influenced by money, greed. Others are influenced by power and control. Others are influenced by, well, the list goes on and on and on. Amen? They want fame and fortune. <clears throat> the devil has influenced people from the garden to the grave and beyond all the way to hell. There's people in hell today, the multitudes, the multitudes, the Bible says, are in hell today because they've been influenced by someone or something to do the wrong thing instead of doing the right thing. You can be influenced by following Christ or the devil. They're your two choices. Amen? Amen. But if you're, in, listen, if you invest in Jesus, Jesus is willing to invest in you. Hallelujah. I'm glad he invested in me. Amen. Praise Amen. God. I'm glad I said yes to Jesus. The devil influences you. He'll break your heart. He'll break your life in pieces. But when you allow Jesus to influence you, he'll put all the pieces of your broken heart and broken life back together again. Did he do that for you? Yes. He did it for me. Hallelujah. All other influences, wherever they come from other than Christ, will fade away. But when you let the Holy Spirit influence you, that lasts for all eternity. Yes, Amen. Amen. From this life right into the next. I'm going to talk about myself a little bit so because I, I don't want to talk about you. <laughs> Amen. So I'll pick on me. Amen. But I can remember being as a young boy, about 11 years old, I was highly influenced because my mom and dad ended up buying a restaurant slash pool hall. 
And that's why I went bad. That's why I got messed up. There were a lot of street gangs back in the day, and I admired them men. They were a lot older than I was, and they was having gang wars, and they all was, you know, just all into the world and wild music and the whole nine yards that goes along with that. And it was called, the place was called the rendezvous. The meeting place is what it means. And uh, that's where I met the devil, for sure. And that's where I started to go wrong. And every day I learned something because I was influenced by the wrong people to do the wrong thing. And then I went from bad to worse. From the frying pan to the fire, so to speak. Went on to, to, to not only join gangs myself, be a leader of a gang, and then, then street gangs and motorcycle gangs, and the list went on and on and on. And from that point on, I was influenced to do evil. I caused a lot of pain, a lot of grief, a lot of sorrow in my family and to others. Hurt a lot of people. I was so filled with, as I got worse and the devil took over more, and I got influenced more to do the wrong things. I was so filled with hatred and uh, murder was in my heart. Bitterness and lust and rebellion and yes, even revenge. And I can't tell you the rest because it's just too ugly and too bad. I was captive though by the devil all because of influence. I'm sure some of you here, don't look at me like that. Some of you still messed up. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, that's right. I was messed up. I was held captive by the devil. Just like it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 26. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Once you yield yourself to the enemy, you're his. Mm -hmm. And he just plays with you like, like, like a puppet on a string. He could push my buttons. I'd be all right, normal one minute. And the next minute, I'd be like a devil. Mm. He knew. He knew that he had control over me. How I made it that far up to that point is, is a miracle. God knew he seen something in me that nobody else saw. Maybe my wife, that's about it. Everybody was telling her, why don't you leave that guy, man? He's a nut. Why don't you leave that guy? He's crazy. Well, get rid of him, man. You don't need that. But she saw something in me. So did Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Maybe not at that time. But she said she held on. Ain't you happy you held on? <laughs> I swear I am. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And all because I gave place to the enemy. I allowed him to influence me. And that led to to evil. I was bad to the bone, but now I'm saved to the bone. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Yeah, every bit of it. Saved. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, 18 says it like this. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Verse 18. And ye shall be my sons and daughters saith the Lord Almighty. Hallelujah. Think about that. But listen, there's conditions there. The second verse, 18, is, is a promise from God. When we do the first thing that it says in verse 17, that is, come out from among them. Come out from the world that influences you to do evil. Come out from among them and the evil places that you're hanging out. Touch not that unclean thing, whatever that unclean thing will be. Come on, drugs, alcohol, you name it. Pornography, the list is endless. That's an unclean thing. It'll destroy your soul. It'll pollute your soul. Amen? It'll corrupt your mind. Your soul will be held in captivity like mine was. Amen? That unclean thing could be whatever. It's different for different people. But it will pollute. Again, it'll pollute your soul. It's a plague sent from hell. Amen? To destroy you. But he says, come out from among them. You got to do your part. By coming out, accepting Christ as your Savior, then He He does His part by be, by by allowing you to become His sons and daughters of the Most High God. Hallelujah! Yes, See, we all have some made some wrong choices in life. Amen. There you go. Look at me like that again. <laughs> Look at your neighbor. Say He's talking to you too. Amen. We all make them wrong cho choices. Amen. Listen. You know, 
One thing for sure, we are governed by our influences, whether they're good or whether they're evil. You're either filled, come on, somebody, with, with, with the influences of the world and self and the devil or with the things of God. Hallelujah. Listen, don't, listen, everybody, let me put it this way. Don't open that closet because when you open that closet, skeletons going to jump out at you. <laughs> They're going to jump out at you. Everybody's got skeletons in the closet. As long as you don't have them now. <laughs> if you do, put them on a hanger and put them in the back of the closet. Come on, somebody. So they don't rattle, shake, rattle, and roll when you open up the closet. You know what I'm talking about. We all got something that we got to deal with. Even to this day. That devil, just because you don't serve the devil no more, don't mean that the devil ain't trying to get you back. Mm, he's still trying to influence you. He still tries to influence you when you leave the church to talk about somebody. Maybe even the pastor. Ah, oh, some of you go home on the way home, you'd be burping before you even eat because you had lunch, you ate the pastor all up on the way home. Mm, how do I taste? How do I taste? Yeah, we're influenced all the time by our decisions. We're influenced to make the right or wrong decisions. It's whatever voice you're going to listen to. Amen? Amen. Somebody shout, close the closet. <laughs> Ooh, don't look back. Amen. Don't look back at your past. Praise God. Listen, we all, again, make mistakes. If you're going to look back, though, look back to Calvary. Amen. Amen. Look back to the cross. Yes. Look back to what Jesus did for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Then you can start to look forward. Glory be to God. Look forward to heaven. Amen. Look forward to being yes. used of the Lord. Yes. Look forward to being a blessing. Yes. Don't keep looking back on your past mistakes. You can't do nothing about your past mistakes except repent over them. Amen. It's like right now if somebody spilled a glass of milk on the rug. We, oh, we, we, we can clean the rug, but we can't pour that milk back in that glass. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You pour another fresh glass. That's how Jesus is. You repent of your sins. You get a fresh touch of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You get cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. And you move on. Amen. Keep serving and loving the Lord. Yes. Glory be to God. Yes. Can I get a witness in the house? Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Because if you're truly born again, the Lord says this about your past. In Psalms 103, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far has I removed your iniquities, your transgressions from you. Yes. That's what he does with the past. Amen? Amen? I found God Almighty to be a way maker and a chain breaker. Yes. He can break the chains of bondage yes. in your life. Yes. Yes. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. The devil tells you there's no way out of this. There's no way out of your problem. There's no way out of your situation. There's no way out of your finances. There's no way out of the, your bad marriage. There's no way out of your tormented mind. There's no way out of your sickness and disease. He's a liar. The Bible calls him a liar. He's the father of lies. He created lies. Only God is the truth. Let every man be a liar, the Bible says. God is the truth, and he tells the truth. What is the truth? Right here. God says you're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who strengthens you. The word of God says you're an overcomer in Jesus' name. The Bible says you can be victorious in Jesus' name. That's who you are yes, in Christ. Give him some praise. Yes, yeah. Let me tell you something. God don't cheat us out of nothing. The devil will. We cheat ourselves many a time, but God won't cheat. He don't hold nothing back. Amen. Woo, glory yes. be to God. He'll give you a double portion. Amen. Double for your trouble. Thank you, Jesus. When you're sold out the whole route, saved to the bone, love them with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and that nasty neighbor as yourself. <laughs> That's right. It's easy to love. Bible even says you can love them who love you, but can you love them who don't love you? Mm -hmm. Can you love them who's stabbing in the back, lying and gossiping about you? Yeah. You ain't got to hang with them, but you got to love them. 
You don't have to love what they say and do, but you got to love their soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory be to God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. But the devil will steal everything you've got if you give it to him. But for me, finally there came a day. I said there came a day when I said yes to Jesus. And I started being influenced by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of his written word, by the power of his love. Amen. Oh, it made a difference. It made all the difference between life, death, heaven, and hell. Glory be to God. When you say yes to Jesus, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. There, there's no sin too deep that God can't pull you out of if you want to be pulled out of it. There's no wall high enough that can keep Jesus out. Come on, mm, my Lord. I was saved by the blood of Christ. Saved what? To not just live for him, but to help others to find him as their Lord and Savior. That's our duty once we're saved. We just can't be like a sponge sucking it all up for ourselves. We got to squeeze it out and give it to other people as well. Amen. Let them enjoy this eternal life that we share in. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm just not the same person I was. Thank God. Some of my wife said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. She never did write that book she was going to write. <laughs> Amen. She still might. I don't know. She don't say, I was married once, but to two men. <laughs> two different men. Ooh. How you like me now? <laughs> Glory be to yes, God. Lord, the Lord. Ooh, because I got a new way of walking. Yeah. A new yeah. way of talking. Hey, I got yeah. a new way of living. Yeah. Yeah. Put that on an album. Glory be to God. Yeah. Yeah. Best seller. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I thought I'm going to get my licks in somewhere. I'm going to sing on you. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> got him again, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, Johnny having church all by himself back there. Yeah. Why? Because I got a new name written down in glory. Woo! Hallelujah. Yes, yeah, his name is Jesus. Yes, Ooh, say that name with me. Jesus. Uh, say it like you mean it. Jesus. Say it like you really mean it. Jesus. Uh, oh, God, no, that, that's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. I have been influenced by the Lord of creation. Glory be to God. Yes. No longer held captive by the influence of the devil or the world. Listen to what Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 said. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold on to the one and despise the other. But ye cannot serve God and mammon. Amen. Ooh, that's a whole, I could preach an hour just on that. But here's the deal. The thing is. There's more to mammon than just about money. Everybody equates it to money. It's a man is anything that influences you more than God. Amen. Amen. Can't put it more simpler than that. That's what man is if you got so influenced by something other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? Amen. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 20 says it like this. But I say... That the things which the Gentiles, that's the unbelievers, sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils mm -hmm. and not to God. Mm -hmm. And I would not that ye would have fellowship with devils. Can't serve two masters. Mm -hmm. Can't come to church on Sunday and say, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> and then go out there and play with the devil all week long. Mm -hmm. Amen. Can't come, come in here and give a testimony how much you love Jesus. When you hate your brother. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hey! Yeah. Can't put your feet under the table of the Lord, he says, and under the table of the devils. It's either one or the other. Be careful who you allow to influence you. Amen? Amen. You cannot have a divided heart. Can't have a divided Your heart's got to be sold out. Remember what it said? Love the Lord God with all your heart. Not half your heart. Not even 99% because that little bit, that leaven, leavens the whole lump. Amen. Mm. Who or what do you worship at the altar of your heart? Who do you allow to influence you at the altar of your heart? I hope it's Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. First John chapter 2 
verse 26. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Remember that word? That was one of the meanings of influence. They seduce you. Some people, like I was, liked to be, wanted to be seduced. I wanted to live that lifestyle. You couldn't talk me out of it. It was glamorous to me. Because the Bible says you'll enjoy sin for a season. Ooh, I enjoyed all I could. I did it all. Because I was seduced by the devil. He'll be glad to seduce you. Come on. Come on. Look at him. He'll make it shiny. He'll make it big. He'll make it beautiful. He'll make it look like anything you want it to look like. Come on. Amen. What turns you on, boy? I got it. What turns you on, girl? I got you. Mm -hmm. He'll be glad to accommodate you, to influence you, to seduce you, so that you can split hell wide open. Because that's where I was headed. Amen. I love sin. Look at that. Amen. Some of you might still love sin. Oh, nobody here. We don't know. Do I'm talking to them out there. Right? <laughs> you know, sin tastes good. Sin makes you feel good for the moment. What you say? You enjoy sin for a season, but after that, that's right. Hmm? It's like when you put it in, it tastes like honey, and then when it hits your gut, it makes you sick. That's what sin does. Devil will make it taste good here, but he forgot to tell you the after effect. He forgot to tell you he ain't going to play out what's going to happen down the road. The price you got to pay. The disease you may get. The heartbreak you might have. The broken home you might get. The list goes on. Come on, somebody. Amen. But we all fall for the trap. When we don't have Jesus. It's easy to be influenced. Look at the world today. It's influenced by the devil. Yes, yes. Look what's happening. All over the globe. Influence. Hatred. Evil. We wonder how the Antichrist is going to take over. That easy. That he, because he's allowed to. He can't do nothing without God's permission. But he's going to have permission to take over. And that's why we got to take off. Amen. Glory be to God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're not going to be here to experience the wrath of Almighty God. That's going to fall on the children of disobedience. Yes. Yes. Those that don't want to seek the Lord, love the Lord, and serve the Lord. They've been seduced by the devil. Mm. Can I get a witness from somebody? Ooh, but it will make you sick. And if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired... And this message is for you today. Because you don't have to be sick and tired no more. You don't have to be bound any longer. You don't have to be seduced anymore as long as you don't want to. If you're looking for an escape, you're looking for a way out, Jesus said, I am the way. He's the way to escape. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He's the way out of your misery. Amen. He's the only one that can put the broken pieces of your life back together again. Yes. He's the only one that can heal a marriage, heal a body, heal a mind. Yes. Heal your pocketbook. Yes. 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 Hey, I feel like yes. preaching today. Yes. Woo. Glory be to God. Woo. You need to, there's still time to come to Christ. The Bible says it's time. Today's the day of salvation. And you know what? There's still room at the cross for you. Yes. Jesus will make sure of that. Amen. Hallelujah. And he did make sure of that. The tomb is open. Yes. Woo. Glory be to yes. God. He's sitting at the right hand of God. Don't pay a cake. You're going to praise him, praise him. You know, I don't like patty cake. Hallelujah. It's open for a reason. And the gates of heaven are still open for a reason. Because people are still going in, but the gates of hell are still open too. The choice is yours. Amen. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. So then... Every one of us shall account for himself to God. We got to give an account to God of what we allow to influence us, who we allow to influence us. We're going to stand before the Almighty, before the judgment seat of Christ. There's two kind of judgments 
One for the Christians and one for the non-Christians. The one for the non-Christians is going to be there to judge their sins. And they'll be doomed forever because of their sin. Because they didn't repent and call out on the name of Jesus and ask for mercy. The other judgment for the children of God are going to be judged according to their works. What they've done, the Bible said, in our body, good or bad. How we've allowed influence to guide us. To make our decisions. Still saved. And some by the skin of their chinny chin chin. If not all of us. Come on somebody. Amen. But we're going to give an account of ourselves. Not to him. Not to her. Can't blame him. Can't blame her. Can't do this. Can't. No. By ourselves. Between us and Christ. Then in Matthew, he, he really tells it like it is. Chapter 12, verses 36 and 37. But I say unto you that every idle word ooh, that men shall speak, they shall account, therefore, in the day of judgment. Ah, there's that judgment I was talking about. The judgment of your works. The judgment of your tongue. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, I just read it. Every idle word that comes out of your mouth, out of your, from your tongue. Be careful what you say. Do you still want to eat me for lunch on the way home? <laughs> See what I'm saying? That judgment's coming. When you think you were going to have a three-story mansion in heaven, and you only get one of those little condominiums, and the Lord said, you ate the pastor for lunch. Three strikes are out. Condominium. <laughs> If there's any garages up there, that's where you're going. You're going to the garage. <laughs> Woo. Well, we lost that mansion quick, didn't we? <laughs> now, I'm just playing Woo. with you. But I made my point, didn't I? <laughs> I bet you're going to be thanking God for me on the way home now, ain't you? <laughs> I know you love me. <laughs> From a distance. Amen. <laughs> But I say unto you, every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof, therefore, in the day of judgment. Next verse. For by, oh, it's going to get heavy now. Hold on. Buckle up. Buckle up. Put your seatbelts on. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. That's all right. That's a good one. You can unbuckle for that one. Justified. Hallelujah. All good. All good. Now you got to buckle up for the next part. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Mm -hmm. Ooh, boy, such power in, in our words. Mm -hmm. We should, that's why you hear me say from time to time, you got to choose your words very carefully. Make sure they're sweet because you're going to end up eating them. Uh -huh. mm. See, we just say what we want sometimes. We just, blah, 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 you ever see a St. Bernard? I had a couple of them. They're slobber all over. Oh, that's how some crazy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> People are slow today. <laughs> Man, the heat over or something? My. Unless I hit a nerve. And that's what it is. I hit a nerve. <laughs> Got him again, Jesus. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh, isn't it wonderful to be saved? Yeah. I just love God. I love humor. Amen. Always got good humor. I can't stand these stuff hurt people. You know what I mean? Can't even crack a smile. I should never get sick as much as I laugh. Amen. The Bible says it. That's what the Bible says. But I have to do it good like a medicine. I don't take no meds either. I just laugh a lot. I gotta try it sometimes. Some of your faces will crack. You still touch. I better move on with meddling now. I stop preaching there for a minute. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, we got 10 more minutes. I can get a lot of said in 10 more minutes. Glory to God. One more. One more. One more. Hallelujah. How many so glad you came? Let me see. We'll pray for the rest of you. Praise <laughs> God. 
I love the Lord. Amen. 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 Anybody else love the Lord in this place? Yeah. 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 So I would say it's very important to, to be careful of who or what influences you. Amen? Amen. You won't forget that word for a while. You've got to think it through sometimes. And you know, we're all guilty of it. Even to this day as Christians, spirit-filled and everything else, we're still human. Amen? Amen? We're still human. Jesus was the only one that was perfect. We're still working on it. Diamonds in the rough. Come on. Amen. Trying to get to, but you know what the main thing is? Keep working on it. It's when we become satisfied in our walk with the Lord, or we become used to, well, this is me. Like it or not, lump it if you don't like it. You know, what? Where's that at in the Bible? You wonder why you don't grow. Wonder why you ain't got no friends. Wonder why your husband never always find a way to go out somewhere. <laughs> or the wife. I had to be careful with that one. <laughs> why is everybody always picking on me? It's true, we gotta be careful with the with our words. You can't let them be idle. Can't let them be idle words. Amen? For every idle word. That's a stupid word, in other words. Something you shouldn't have said in the first place. And then you got then you gotta come back and eat humble pie anyhow. Amen. Hello. Amen. Oh, some people they just can't handle that humble pie, but I'm 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 sorry. They just can't get it out. Can't admit when they're wrong. How many how many would be bold enough to say that's you? And it's like, one, two, two and a half. Can I get three? <laughs> Woo, I won't tell nobody. But it's the truth. Amen. Influenced by what? What we've been raised with. How we grew up, for better or worse. You know, a lot of people are adults. Their parents have already passed on. And they're still carrying around the scars, come on, of the influence that was r rotten and bad and wrong. Mm -hmm. You got to let that junk go. Mm -hmm. You got to give it. It hindered your whole life. That's right. You got to let it go. Give it to Jesus. That's what he died for. Mm -hmm. Save your soul and set you free from all that garbage. Yes. Yes. Set you free from your past that everybody has. Yep. Come on. Who wants to walk around in guilt? Who wants to run around, walk around boohooing and crying all the time about our past? And we all have one. We all have one. I just choose not to live in mine. Amen. Amen. Either he saved me or he didn't. He delivered me or he didn't. He forgave me or he didn't. The blood works or it don't. That's what it comes down to. I just believe it. Glory yes. be to God. Yes. Yes. Because some Christians are still prisoners in their own mind. Prisoners of their own fears. Their own guilt. They, they don't know how to get out of that prison. Well, that's what Jesus come to do. Set the captive free. Amen? Yes, Amen. He opened the prison doors. Hallelujah. Yes, Amen. Yes, Jesus. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Coming in for a landing. I might circle the airport. I got enough fuel to circle one more time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I would say that it's very important on who or what you allow to influence you for the rest of your life. Amen. Amen. In closing, Hebrews chapter 2, first part of verse 3 says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? If you neglect the message of the cross, if you neglect the message of the crucifixion, if you neglect the message of the resurrection, if you reject the message of Christ, there is no escape. You're doomed. You're going to split hell wide open. But the grace part is, you don't have to. Amen. The mercy part is, there's no need to. He paid the price. All you've got to do is repent yes. 
and accept him and accept what he did on the cross. Been washed, be washed in his blood. Yes, be cleansed by the power of the word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. How shall we escape? If we neglect, you don't have to neglect it. You can accept it. What he did to purchase your salvation. Yes. Christ is the only way to escape. Amen. Amen. He made a way of escape. Only one way. He said, I am the way. No other religion, no other faith made a way of salvation but Christ, Christianity. Nobody else died on the cross for the sins of the world. Nobody else made a way of escape for all eternity. I hate to say it like this, but if you die and go to hell, it's your fault after hearing a message like this, after rejecting a the Christ of the cross. Yes. It'll be on you. That's right. The Bible says it's just like that in Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. If we don't warn the people, if the watchmen on the wall don't warn the people, and the enemy sneaks in, then the blood of the people is on that watchman's head. He caused it to happen by his neglect. But if he warns the people, like we're doing right now, Telling the truth, blowing the trumpet, warning the people that Christ is coming. It's time to be saved. Time to give your heart and life to Jesus. 100%. And if they don't heed, then their blood is on their own head. Right. Not on the watchman no more. Well, today I'm a watchman on the wall. And I'm sounding the alarm. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Don't postpone it. Don't let the devil in the world influence you and talk you out of your soul salvation. But come to Christ. Let's all stand as we close. Christ is the only way of escape. The great salvation was done on the cross. And now you can have the results that Christ paid for you. Yes. If you want it, Will you let the Holy Spirit influence you right now to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you're born again, God bless you. You're in our prayers. We love you. We thank God for you. But if you're not, we want you to join the family of God. I made a lot of mistakes. Had a lot of regrets growing up. But accepting Jesus Christ wasn't one of them. I never looked back. Only forward. If you want to be saved, you want to give your heart to Jesus, you want your slate, your sins forgiven, washed in the blood of Jesus, follow us in this prayer according to the scripture. According to the word of God, say something I made up, this is something out of the Bible. This is something we all did, we all need to do. If you're ready, just follow us in this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I come in the name of Jesus. I come in the name of Jesus. Ask you to forgive all my sin. I ask you to forgive all my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my into my life. Into my life. Save my soul. Save my soul. I'm weak. I'm weak. I need your strength. I need your strength. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your presence. Influence me. Influence me. In the Word of God. In the Word of God. The work of God. The work of God. The things of God. The call of God. The call of God. Thank you, Thank you for hearing for you and answering my prayer. And answering I, pray it I pray it in the name of Jesus, the name Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And amen. Give him some praise in the house. Yeah. For saving